Peter Del Pena with USA Women's Under-19 head coach Shiv Chanderpaul after a last over loss by five wickets to Scotland in the last place consolation playoff here in the final match of the inaugural ICC Women's Under-19 T20 World Cup for USA. What are your overall thoughts on how today unfolded? Oh, I thought um, we started well with the bat. We had the best partnership in the tournament so far. They were doing well. Um, they were able to find the boundaries but weren't able to tick it over. I mean, we had a lot of dot balls in between. We should have been able to be taking that over and be a little better, um, try to minimize so many, so many dot balls. I hate to single out players, especially at an under-19 level, but Disha Dingra, uh, she scored 30 off 33 balls, six boundaries and four singles. So she scored off 10 of 33 deliveries, meaning I believe it was 70% accounted in the calculation. 70% of her deliveries were dot balls. And in T20 cricket, when I've gone into the analytics at this at senior level, openers generally have a scoring shot efficiency of around 50 to 55 percent and the, that's that's an average and your elite ones are at 60 percent so to have 70 percent dot balls to be at the crease for essentially 11 overs what are some of the things that a player like her or anybody else because this was not a unique to Disha this was a, a team-wide issue throughout the tournament what are some of the things they can be working on to try and improve that percentage to turn some of those dots into at least singles? Well, that's, that's one of the things when I went out I've been, I, I spoke to her about. Um, you know, she started well, but then during her innings, I mean, later on in her innings, there was a lot of dot balls building up. Uh, I mean, last year was the one who started a bit slow up front, but was able to maintain and, and increase her strike rate. Um, this just slowed down after she got that start. And I, I went in and I told her we needed to pick it up. Um, um, and you know, she, she tried, but then she got out there. But I think it was a bit low in energy. I could see that happen today. Uh, most of us were a bit low in energy. Um, but mind you say that the game before also, she had a lot of dot balls, especially later on when the spinners came on. And we have to find ways to take that over, especially when you have a start like that. You've got to be able to push it on and keep the score rate ticking. Score off every ball if you can and make sure that we push for a bigger total. We had enough batters in the shed. You know, we, we try to get batters out there and try to tell them we need to push on and we need to make sure that we score off every ball as possible. But look, some, I mean, look, Tia went out there and she was struggling because I could see from this morning she was jet lagged and she was really tired. When she was in the nets also, she was sitting a bit. Um, I think today the third day, the jet lag really hit her today and um, she was struggling big time. But the rest of people have been here for a while now, so they should not have, I know, had too much of problems being out there with these conditions, you know? I mean, I think a lot of people would hear that and wonder if she was that jet lagged, why was she playing today? Well, we need to, we need to, to um, put her in there, you know, we need to, because of what happened up front. And then her batting and feeling plays a, um, a major part also in the team, the, and the catch she took, I mean she, she put on one and two, but she took a, a catch there which was, which we know that she can do in, in those areas. Um, but look, she came back out, she went in the net and she bat, but you can still see, you can still see a little bit of jet lag in her system. And then we had, a, we have one and two player who was not well yesterday too, so we had a player who, who we, you know, could get the job done for us. In terms of, again, not just the dot balls, but I would say, especially later in the innings, the last six, seven overs, I felt like Scotland saved a lot of runs in the field, not just fielding on the boundary, crisp, clean fielding, balls that were kept to one that USA were misfielding over the road for four. But just the running between the wickets felt very lethargic. You said the team was low energy. The running between the wickets at times looked a bit lethargic, looked a bit like there were a lot of twos that were missed that we didn't really see until that final over where they put the pressure on and it forced a missed run out and then an overthrow was taken. But prior to that, there wasn't really much of that seen. And I'm just curious how much of that do you feel was a product of the players being reluctant to get run out based on what had happened early in the tournament? Well, I, I mentioned to them earlier, this is not Australia we're playing against. And this, these um, Scotland fillers are not as good as Australia. 
So we missed a lot of singles in the circles also. And I, I always say to them, push for the first one as hard as you can. And always be in the lookout, just in case a bubble on the outfield, you can get the second one. And these girls, the Scotland, not all the players have good arms, and not all of them are quick enough. Um, as a player, you have to be able to identify these things. I'm on the outside, I'm, I'm seeing these things, but I can't be shouting at you every minute. You gotta be able to, you know, I, try and, I can't send message on the field because you're not allowed you're a certain amount of time to, to, to get certain things done. Um, it's difficult as a coach to, to, to try and get your players, uh, but you know, if you talk about it in a meeting and you talk about it, I mean, when you get out there, you have to be able to, to, to do these things. You can't just drop for a single. You have to look the part and the body language, if you show that part that you want, really want to push for two, you'll get it. Another big difference in the game today, anybody who saw it would know the fielding. That was, in my view, the main difference and anybody else who I've spoken to before talking with you feels the same way. Eight missed chances by USA. Compare that to Scotland, who was sloppy at times. There was four overthrows early in the innings, and there were a couple um, sloppy missed fields by Scotland and one or two missed chances, but two crucial match-turning catches. Darcy Carter took a deep mid-wicket, one to get Ritu Singh dismissed, and then the catch she took to dismiss Kitika Katali. It was a really athletic catch, coming forward, diving forward. That's the kind of catch we haven't seen USA take basically all tournament. And then if those go to ground or go over the boundary, those are arguably eight runs that could have made the difference for USA, and by contrast, USA's drops. It wasn't so much the drops on the whole that was alarming. It was that almost every single one of the drops today was put down by arguably USA's best fielders. That was kind of the, the head-scratching thing, that these were not catches that go up in the air and you think that goes to a certain field and you think that's a 50-50 chance. These are all put down by arguably USA's top fielders, and I'm curious, why do you think they could not hold on to what were not altogether difficult chances? Well, look, the feeling has always been a concern here. Um, and since we came, we've been trying to do a lot of catches, trying to get people to catch balls as much as we can to try and get them to make sure they get accustomed to the to the balls and in South Africa coming down a bit quicker. But look, we've done enough catches and it's just straightforward catches. Straightforward catches and we're not looking at the ball in our hands. And sometimes we go hard hands instead of let pushing the balls into our hands. And you know, it, there are catches that it wasn't like hard catches with soft catches, some of them in the ring. Some of them are out in the ring and straight straight to you, you should be able to take those catches. But we weren't able to do that. Um, but this is the area, this is definitely the area we need to work on because it's been causing us matches. It causes a game against um, Bangladesh, against Sri Lanka, um, against, um, Sri Lanka also. If our feeling was a little better, we could have probably pulled home a few games and even this game also. So it keep it keep causing us matches. And the thing is it also when when they drop the catches, you tell them look, recover as quickly as possible. It's done happen, it recover as quickly as possible and get the ball in. And when we drop it, we just dung our head and we mope it around and, and they sit and they run too. Right? And we 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 we're looking around and looking and we just dung in our head instead of recover as quickly as possible and get your throws in so we can make those runouts. Um, but we're not and we're allowing them to get twos. In terms of selection mechanisms and putting an emphasis on fielding, how much emphasis did you feel was put on fielding when selecting this squad? I, I really don't know what's happening because I know the team I had and the role that every individual was playing in the team, which was helping us to win the matches. And that, all of that was changed and makes a difference in, in having a winning team and a team the way you're trying to, to sort out. What's the number one thing you're going to take away from this coaching experience, both broadly in your tenure as USA Women's Under-19 coach and this tour specifically? Well, obviously, look, there is always room for improvement. The only thing these girls need people to work with them constantly to improve, and that didn't never really happen here. Um, but as a coach, you know, you always have to look out for your players. You go there, you try your best for them, and encourage them as much as you can. 
to do better. I know they are hurt. I could have seen when they came off, they were all crying. But we got to stay strong. At the end of the day, as much as you hurt, remember this next time so you can come better next time and make sure that you win as much as you can next time. So you're not in the same position again, hopefully next time. When that next time comes, next under 19 World Cup specifically in two years, there's a lot of players who are in this squad, the majority of the players who are in this squad, who are eligible to still be in the team uh, at the next opportunity in two years from now. What do you hope that they have taken from this experience that you think will help them put in a better performance and better results two years from now? Well, I mean, look, they've gotten they've got some exposure from this, and we try to make sure that everyone gets a game. And hopefully they can, you know, learn from this next time with some more experience playing out there, playing in the U.S. I don't know what the, um, what, uh, um, what conditions or what game are they going to be playing, but hopefully, you know, they can grow from strength to strength. Because with this exposure, this should help them to, to improve and come in next time wrong. And hopefully a couple more other tournaments is organized between for them to play so they can develop their game. Just finally, for you personally as a coach, how has coaching the U.S. women's players and the U.S. women's under-19 players changed you and personally and changed you in the way that you approach coaching players, whether it's men's or women's players? Well, look, over the years, I mean, from when I started, it was a bit different. You've been told a lot of things and you've been probably told off a lot of times. The, it, time has changed over that period, every decade has changed. You have to be a little more easy on the players, you have to encourage them more. And that is what you, you, you get from, a, from being a coach these days. You try not to say much, you try to get more out of them. So when they get on the park, they can think for themselves. So that is, that is something you, you do as coach now, and you try not to say as much as, and you try to get as, as much out of the players, see where they are, how they're thinking. And so you know if they are ready when they step on the park, so you don't have to do much when you sit down out there or so, you know? But yet in between, you still have to help because you see things that they will not be able to see. And then as a follow-up to that, what do you hope the players and other people involved in U.S. cricket will remember you most by in terms of how you've impacted these players? Well, I, I don't know how they are going to remember me by, but I know the players know that, you know, while I'm here, you know, I, I'm i not just a one-sided person. I look out for everyone. If anyone messed up, I'm going to also let them know that they are messing up and they need to do, you know, need to be um, up with the, with the others. And I'm also not the person who set double standards. Whatever one, go for one, go for all, you know? So everybody pull together as a team, as a unit, go out there and play as, as one team also. Anything else you want to say about today's match or the, the tour as a whole? Look, today is gone and I've seen how hard they are, how hard the players are. And I know coming next time around, they are going to try and look back at all of these things and find ways to improve and get better come next time around. And what's the number one thing on or off the field that you're going to remember most about this World Cup experience? Look, the team, the players you had around you, they're a bunch of good um, girls. They always have fun, they enjoy themselves, and you hope they can keep doing that as one, one team, you know? Look out for each other and enjoy, enjoy it together.